thank you for tuning in. Thanks for the opportunity every week to encourage you. If you haven't yet, again, go ahead and share the video. Uh, many of us tuned in last week uh, for my message that I shared with you. Again, I told you the, the concept of that message was it was a, a medley of scriptures that I sensed that God wanted me to share with you. And I was glad I was obedient because I got some text messages right after. Say, Pastor Felix, I needed that word. I got some direct message on Facebook. Pastor Felix, I needed that word. I needed to hear that. Um, so last week's message is available on our YouTube channel, Journey Ministries. Um, came on YouTube channel. It's also on our podcast, Journey Ministry Podcast. Um, and you can watch the replay on our Facebook page. This Facebook page that you're tuning in, just scroll down and you'll see the replay. But I love the part. Uh, many of you guys were tuning in and I talked about trusting the Lord, talked about giving thanks and make joy a feast. But the scripture that really highlighted some positive impact and stirred you up and allowed you guys to refocus a little bit and think differently and get a renewed perspective was the first Thessalonians 4 11 verse 11 um, scripture that said mind your own business <laughs> live peace aspire to live peace and calm life mind your own business do good with your hands and um, that was challenging but it's in the word so it's an invitation to grow and to mature so I hope by you guys minding your own business by you being busy with your own hands by you aspiring to live peace uh, and calm life that you actually redeem the time this week. And I said, I believe that if you focus on the spheres of influence God has called you to, if you focus on your responsibility, um, instead of focuses on other people a lot of the times, you would say that you have more time on your hand and God could redeem your time. Amen? So if you haven't watched that, I would say jump in and go ahead and watch that when you get a chance. Well, if you were tuning in last week, I said that I was actually beginning to look at a message on wisdom let me just drink a little bit of coffee real quick and um, I did that this week I'm still growing in it I'm still looking at the scripture I'm still trying to dive in deeper this week um, spend some time diving in deeper in some of these scriptures um, getting some better understanding growing in wisdom um, in regards to the scripture but I feel like I, I haven't quote-unquote arrived but I do have enough to share with you to bring practical um, strategies in your life and also bring breakthrough and so if you're here tuning in we're gonna be diving in to wisdom and what wisdom look like what wisdom sounds like what wisdom feels like what's the wisdom like heaven like uh, and how do we know we're operating in wisdom we're gonna also define wisdom on a working definition so if you're ready right now guys give me a thumbs up um, give me I'm ready um, and let's go for the ride right now so Again, I mentioned last week I'll be talking about wisdom, and here I am. I'm going to start talking about wisdom right now. Um, my first subtitle, if I wanted to kind of share the first group of thoughts that I'll be talking about, is that revelation gives birth to wisdom. Revelation gives birth to wisdom. You know, last week, one of the scriptures that I started out after two minutes into my intro, I really felt impressed on the Lord to share this scripture with you, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 16 to 17 and this is what it says but the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart the veil is lifted and they can see the moment with an instant that you turn to the Lord the veil is lifted or removed and they can see now the Lord I'm referring to is the Holy Spirit and wherever he is there is freedom that's the verse 17 of that scripture. The moment one turns to the Lord, the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart. Wow. Tips. Be open to receive, to get upgrades, to get revelation, to get understanding, to be corrected. <laughs> you know, all those different things. Be open for God's suggestion, for God's direction, for his insights. Be open. The moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, the veil are removed the blinders on your life on your eyes are removed and you can see and it says guess what it says after that now the Lord I am referring to is the Holy Spirit and wherever he is there's freedom and so that is a, a wisdom strategy turn to the Lord you know I said another scripture last week Proverbs 3 5 and 6 trust in the Lord with all your heart not a little bit of your heart but all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Invite Him into your life, and He will make your path straight. 
And so 2 Corinthians 3, verse 16 to 17, the moment you turn to the Lord, the, you with an open heart, the veils are removed and you can see. So wisdom begins by turning to the Lord. You know, Paul was making a distinction between the old covenant and the new covenant in this approach. If we preach the old covenant alone and don't share its fulfillment, who, when the fulfillment of the old covenant is Jesus Christ, the veil is still there. I don't know about you, but if anybody just preached the Old Testament, or the Old Covenant to you, and doesn't give you the revelation of Christ out of the Old Testament, you know, the Bible um, is, the, is separated into two testaments, right? Just to give you two demarcations, right? The fullness of God is there. The heart of the Father is on both of the covenant, uh, but the heart of the Father manifested. The second person in the Trinity Jesus Christ shows up on the scene in the New Testament. And everything that we see in the Old Testament was a symbolism of God's um, setting up a people called Israel to, to, to send the promised Messiah, which is our Savior and our Lord and our King, Jesus Christ. Even their symbolisms um, in worship, even their symbolisms in the Sabbath. You know, Hebrew says that, listen, uh, they're still, you know, if the Sabbath could have bring people rest, then Jesus pretty much wouldn't need to come. But the rest for our souls is Jesus Christ. And so when we look at the Old Testament, at the Old Covenant, and we don't illuminate or look at the fullness, the revelation of Jesus Christ, our blinders are still there. And, and the reason I say that is because, think about it this way, what if you were talking about an old style of government? What if you were talking about your country prior to independence? right it's it's right information but you gotta upgrade and say okay we're kind of independent now what if you were talking about your company when it was still privately owned and and it went publicly trading you know if you looked at your company as just privately owned and not now in this current state where it's publicly traded then you're gonna have some problems of how you view and how you interact with your company what about if you look for example in the Cayman Islands in the political system where I think seven or six years ago um, they said, hey, um, or no, sorry, maybe an election, an election ago, they said, hey, Felix, you're from Georgetown. I said, yeah, I'm from Georgetown. You have five or I think it was four or six persons I can vote for in Georgetown. He's like, that can't happen anymore. We're going to do a single member constituency. But guess what? If I showed up to the poll looking for those four or those six people that I can put an X next to or tick next to to say, I want to vote for them, then guys, I wouldn't be able to do it. Why? Because things change. I have to find out what district I'm a part of, Georgetown, what area, what constitu constituency I'm a part of, and I have to look up the people running for office or public office in that constituency, and I got to make a decision. And I'm coming on election day, I have to vote, or I get an option to vote. Guys, a lot of times people look at God still in the Old Testament. They go back to the Old Testament and they're stuck. And Paul was challenging the people of the day in the Corinthian church. I get it. There's a bunch of people coming out from Jerusalem. There's a bunch of believers that really are false teachers where they're teaching circumcision and Jesus. They're teaching the Ten Commandments and the covenant of the Old Testament and Jesus. And he's saying, hey, the moment you turn to Jesus, blinders are removed. And so that was the context that he wanted. That, hey, there's freedom when we turn to Jesus, all right? So that's what he's talking about. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, there is freedom. And if you don't get a sense of freedom, chances are there's not a, an upgrade of revelation or even partnership with Jesus Christ. And that's the beginning of true freedom, partnership with Christ, because you're under new management. I don't know about you, but, you know, Dorothy and I, um, Dorothy bought this home, what, five, almost six years ago? And I don't know about you, but the lady who the lady who used to own the home, she can't just walk up to this house and knock on the door or even try to come through the door. That'll be trespassing. Why? Because we're under new management or we there's a new owner of this vicinity. And when you're going through your life, when the enemy tried to tempt you, when you're going through some challenges and those past issues try to show up, you gotta remind yourself, I am under new management. You don't dare answer that door. Send Jesus and the angels of the Lord to look through that door, to see who's trying to knock. You're under new management. You don't have to adhere to that. <laughs> so I just want to encourage you guys, the moment you turn to the Lord, the veil is removed. That's wisdom. So freedom, revelation, 
or the unveiling uh, of information and the revelation that God gives you, the upgrades and the insight, gives birth to freedom. And freedom is a major ingredient to wisdom. Now, the reason why freedom is a major ingredient to wisdom is the moment you're no longer a slave, the moment you're no longer a slave to your sin, to your ways, to your old self, the moment you are no longer restricted by one option, you could be free to see the many options that God has given you. And that's the beginning of wisdom. What the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So what does that mean? Freedom is a, a, a big ingredient, a foundational aspect of wisdom, right? Because if I'm free, that means I'm not restricted. That means I can think. That means I have the mind of Christ. That means I'm no longer bound to my restricted, limited position previously knowing before I knew Christ. I'm not that old guy. I'm not that guy. I'm not that that was one-sided and one-dimensional. Wow, I can do all things through Christ right now. You know, I have the revelation that the Holy Spirit is inside of me. And I'm going to read a scripture in, in a, couple, a couple minutes that the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and revelation was around when creation was being established. So I have, to, I have an option to partner with the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom. So I'm no longer restricted because the moment I turn to the Lord and the Holy Spirit unveil things to me, and wherever the Lord is, there's freedom, that means I have more than one option. That's wisdom. But I, I love the word freedom, but some of us, when we need an upgrade in our definition of freedom. Because freedom, we think that we're free to do whatever we want. And, you know, and, and there's people and there's nations that their freedom actually re slave them or enslave them again. Some people could be so free that they enslave to that freedom or their independence. Because they have a, a very small mind perspective of what freedom is. Let me share with you, I believe it's Galatians. I believe it's Galatians. I believe it's Galatians 5 verse 13. I could be wrong, but I believe it's Galatians. Let me just check in my Bible to make sure while you get it up. Galatians 5, Galatians 5 verse 13. Yeah, that's right. Galatians 5 verse 13. This is the Paul perspective on freedom. Beloved ones, God, had call, God has called us to live a life of freedom in the Holy Spirit. Okay, where's the freedom? In the Holy Spirit. The new life that we have, it's within the template and the confine, if I would like to use, or the or the, or, or the, the tutelage or the instruction and under being a student of the Holy Spirit. That's where freedom is, in the Holy Spirit. Because we just heard from the scripture, wherever the Lord is, the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So if there's Holy Spirit there, there's freedom. And so he says, beloved ones, God has called us to live a life of freedom in the Holy Spirit. But don't view this wonderful freedom as an opportunity to set up a base or operations in the natural realm. Meaning that, hey, don't use your freedom to go back to natural ways of doing things, fleshly ways, um, meaning the previous old self, Felix, before Christ, ways of doing things. This is what he says. Freedom means that we have become so completely free of self-indulgence that we become servants of one another, expressing love in all we do. Check this out. He says, true freedom. Freedom is a big ingredient, one of the number one ingredients in wisdom. He says, if you're working in freedom, you're in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And because you're in a partnership with the Holy Spirit, you are actually not going to think about yourself less in regards to value. You're just going to think about others as well. And when you begin to think about others, you're no longer worrying about how does this affect me only. Me, myself, and whatever thing I want. You know that movie uh, with Jim Carrey, me, myself, and Irene. It's so much me, 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 I, 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 I. And if you begin to think about how it only affects you, trust me, you're going to be one-sided with your decision and you're not going to be operating in wisdom. So one of the tips that the Holy Spirit has given us through Scripture is like, hey, Felix, don't just think about you. Think about who's, who you're responsible for. Think about how it impacts them. Think about, you know, and begin to look at the different dimensions of our decisions and when we do that with partnership of the Holy Spirit, we ask to make better decisions. We actually live a life filled with wisdom. And he said, listen, freedom means that we become so completely free of self-indulgence that we become servants of one another. 
Wisdom looks like dignifying one another. Wisdom looks like my decision is going to serve the people around me well. It's going to edify. It's going to build up. It's going to instruct. It's going to challenge. Sometimes it's going to even comfort. But what it's going to actually do, it's going to call people higher. It's going to add value. It's not going to discriminate. It's actually going to bring reconciliation. It's actually going to be connection. It's actually going to be redemptive. My decisions are actually going to be thinking about others because I want my gifting. I want my uh, ministry. I want my business. I want my family. I want the members of my family to feel the servanthood of Christ that is bubbling up in me to choose good decisions. And how my decisions that I choose is going to be expressing love in all that we do. True wisdom expresses love. All right, I hope you're catching this. If you're catching this, give me a thumbs up as I take a little coffee break this morning and begin to digest this again with you. I hope this message of wisdom is sinking deep in your spirit. So if we're talking about wisdom, don't you think we should define it a little bit? I think we should define wisdom a little bit. And so let me give you a working definition of wisdom. Wisdom can be defined as the exer as exercising the no knowledge and understanding. Let me say that again. I kind of messed up. Wisdom can be defined as the exercising of knowledge and understanding. All right. So wisdom can be defined as the exercising of knowledge and understanding. So since we're talking about Two big um, two words mainly inside of this um, statement are three. We're talking about wisdom, we're talking about knowledge, and we're talking about understanding. Let's break it down a little further. Let's break down this a little further. Exercising. What's a synonym of exercising in regards to um, the verb exercising in this statement? Wisdom can be defined as the as the exercising of knowledge and understanding. What's that? Well, I would think that a, another word we can use is applying utilizing practicing what is wisdom practicing right how are you applying wisdom how are you utilizing knowledge so wisdom can be defined as the exercising of knowledge meaning the applying the utilizing the practice um, you know of knowledge but what is knowledge what is knowledge by definition knowledge is information that's a big part of it you're knowledgeable because you have information right but you also have skills acquired wow knowledge is having skills acquired by a person through life experiences through education through relational connections and through practical insights of whatever matter they're studying or whatever subject they're studying right it, it, knowledge is information it's about acquiring skills over time through your life experience, through your ex um, education, through relational connections. Could we learn from each other? The Bible says iron sharpens iron. It's, it's by bringing that into full subjection, right? And practicing insights from the information and the skills we have received over time and life experiences. That is knowledge. So we acquire knowledge, guys, from our past. That's experiences, through personal development, that's education, right? And through our network, that is relationship. All right, let me say that again. We acquire information from our past, what we've experienced, you know? Through personal development, that's our decision to grow. You know, growth is a decision, you know, to grow, to get educated, to be informed. Hey, listen, that's education, to be a student, grow. Right now, you guys are being a student right now by learning with me, right, and growing together. And then we, we, we get knowledge through our network of relationships or through our network. Hey, I've learned so much from you. You've learned so much from me. But that, makes, um, that takes intentionality to connect. So a lot of people um, are not growing in wisdom because sometimes they're not partnering with people that are growing and maturing as well. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, Do not be fooled. Bad company corrupts good character. Well, guys, do not be fooled. You know, bad company but a person who's having a struggle, having issues, or having bad challenges, if they group with people who are mature and wise, they're going to begin to grow. They're going to begin to, 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 to take the atmosphere and the insights from the people that are growing in wisdom. And that's what happens in community. That's why the Bible says that there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. 
What does that mean? Is that wisdom can be found if you're seeking it in the multitude or with a number of people that you honor, that you feel that they have experiences, that they have knowledge, that they have acquired a skill over time through education or past experiences or even through their network. And you could actually come to them with a situation and say, hey, I need some clarity. Wisdom with the right posture will show up. Because guys, when we when we reveal certain things in true intimacy and relationship, and intimacy not in a sexual way, but true covenant relationship or connection and value for one another, then there's something that Felix went through that you're personally probably going through right now that you might need insight in, or vice versa. And that's when wisdom pops up. Understanding, what is understanding? Understanding can be defined um, as a, a thorough comprehension of a matter. When you have understanding, right, you have a thorough comprehension of a matter. Like my wife, she's a lawyer, but there might be different aspects of the law in her practice that she has a greater understanding than other people. She might not have understanding as a defense lawyer or a prosecutor, but I can tell you she has understanding on the finance law. She has understanding of the mechanism of the finance and, and stuff like that structure in the Cayman Islands. She has thorough ex, uh, comprehension of a matter. That's what understanding is. You have a great grasp or awareness of a person, place, or a thing. So when you have an understanding for something, you're actually saying, hey, I have a thorough comprehension. I have a great um, grasp or awareness of a, a person, place, or a thing, or that subject matter that we're talking about. So for me, for example, um, I have a good amount of knowledge in business, but I have a greater amount of knowledge in starting a church and, um, you know, starting an NPO, non-for-profit or something like that. I can help people from the, the zero to hero, from the ground up with how to gather people, how to build, how to lead, all the relational stuff that comes, all the overcoming of fear, starting something new. I can help people because I've been there. And I'm still working things out, you know, and I still subject myself to learn from people that is a little further than me because I want to grow in wisdom. And what is wisdom again? Wisdom can be defined as the exercising of knowledge and understanding, right? So what is wisdom again? It is the exercising, as I said, of knowledge and understanding. So you can have knowledge, guys. You can have information right? You can have a acquired skill over time. You could even have life experience. You could have knowledge and understanding. What is understanding? A thorough comprehension of a matter. You can have all of that and still not have wisdom. <laughs> you could have information. You could have understanding on its own or even together, right? But guess what? And still have no wisdom because there's no practice or application of your knowledge and understanding. Wow. Woo, I see I see brains popping. So people could this is the this is what happens in the past. We have connected sometimes with people with information. Maybe we have connected singularly with people with understanding. But these people have not combined the knowledge and understanding and begin to apply and exercise and practice these two to birth wisdom. So let me give you some some example, right? So there could be, I learned this from a businessman, you know, if we were driving one day, he was actually, so like seven or eight years ago, he was trying to hire me, he took me out for lunch and stuff like that. Well-known businessman in Cayman. If you, if I told you his name, he's like, Felix, yeah, he got it. He got the money. He got, he got experience. He got knowledge. He has this, he has that. And he has understanding. He has all those things, right? Wise guy, or older guy, probably in his early sixties now or late fifties. And he says, um, he says to me, Felix, you know, talk to me about the spiel and want me to hire and work for his company and stuff. And he highlights a, a, a civil servant. He highlights someone who works for the government that is a top, like he's not a politician, but they're like one of the chief officers or something. And he says the person name, he said, I, I appreciate that guy. I value that guy. But to be honest with you, Felix, that guy, as much as he tried to create policies, blah, 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 he's not an entrepreneur. He's not a businessman. And even though his policies theoretically can work, even though that sounds good, he said, Felix, I cannot subject myself fully to his policy or adhere to it fully. I still have to explore. I said, Mr. So-and-so, what do you mean? He said, well, that guy haven't started a business. 
that guy is a career civil servant. He got a good salary, but he's not he's not creating wealth to employ somebody else. He he ain't taking a risk in the market. He's not juggling um, people's resources and assets in a company. He's not managing people um, as they practice their skill sets to create revenue for me, for my family, and for their family. He's not doing that. But he said in policy. And I said, I got the thinking, it's like, wow, how many people, um, whether in university, right, have gone to business school or business classes, or let's use that as an example, and have learned from people who taught business and they could theoretically share the information, but these people on their own, uh, on their own time, haven't fully practiced what they're teaching. They haven't exercised or applied what they're teaching, even though they got information, even though they got a thorough grasp and comprehension of the issue. And I got to thinking, like, how many Christians are like that? You know, some leaders are like that. They got information. They even have understanding on their own, but they haven't put into practice over time exercising this to build testimony, to build fruit, and to have wisdom manifested in their life. And so I just want to encourage you, man. You, you, need, you, need, kind, uh, you need knowledge, you need understanding, but you need to practice it. Because when you practice both of them, that's the birth of wisdom. So wisdom, guys, is, as I said, the can be defined as the exercising of knowledge and understanding. Um, and so practice, guys, practice. I got a couple of few, couple more minutes, a couple more um, um, statements, and let me know how you're doing. If I'm ministering to you, give me a thumbs up, and let's go. The great thing about wisdom, guys, is that wisdom was there from the very beginning. The Holy Spirit is also known as the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So in a marketplace, in a business, if I'm talking to people that are believers or non-believers, the word that I use, I don't use the word Holy Spirit. I say, hey, it might be wise if we discover how to do this a little differently. Or, oh, um, you know, wisdom would suggest, you know, wisdom, you know, because I'm honoring God. Wisdom. Who doesn't want wisdom? In the post-pandemic or uh, through the pandemic of what the business and stuff like this is happening, they need wisdom. They need clarity. They need both knowledge and understanding to birth wisdom, to serve their clients. To, to rise above the challenges, to be innovative, to be flexible and adaptable. You need that too. A lot of times people ha stay longer in a negative season or a hard season of their life because they're not innovative. They're not being flexible. First of all, they haven't surrendered. First of all, they have um, surrendered that issue to God. They haven't seek God the counsel. They just got information. You know, you know the, the fact is I can break my arm, for example. That's, that's facts. That's information. But a, a higher truth or a greater revelation is that God can heal my arm. That's what we need to live from, guys. A higher revelation, a higher truth. We need that. So wisdom was at the beginning of, um, of the of foundation of the earth. And I want to read a scripture for you right now. Proverbs 8, verse 22 to 31. I might not read all of it, but let me just start by reading some of it. Proverbs 8, verse 22 says, In the beginning I was there, for God possessed me, talking about wisdom, even before he created the universe. Before God created the universe, wisdom was there. From eternity past, I was set in place. Before the world began. Come on, Holy Spirit. I was anointed from the beginning. Before the ocean depths were poured out. And before there were any glorious fountains overflowing with water, I was there dancing. Come on, Holy Spirit. Let's go. Even before one mountain had been sculpted or one hill raised up, I was already there dancing. When he created the earth, the fields, even the first atom of dust, I was already there. Come on. When they hung the um, tapestry of heavens and stretched out the horizon of the earth, when the clouds and the skies were set in place and the subterranean fountains um, began to flow strong, I was there. When he set in place the pillars of the earth and spoke the decrees of the sea, commanding the waves so that they won't overstep their boundaries. You, you Look at gravity, right? In the earth, right? And there's the wisdom is saying, I was there when God told the waves not to cross the boundaries. Not to cross the boundaries on the land. I know storms come and stuff like that, but naturally speaking, they don't cross the watermark. They don't cross it. The tide comes in and it stops. Come on, he said, I was there when he set in place the pillars of the earth and spotted the decrees of the, of the seas, commanding the wave. I was there close to the creator's side as his master artist. So who built all of this? 
the spirit of wisdom the holy spirit daily he was filled with with the light in me as i playfully rejoiced before him i laughed and i played so happy with what he had made while finding my delight in the children of men wow the holy spirit finding the light in the children of men who god created so wisdom was there from the very beginning proverbs 8 22 to 31 and if wisdom was there from the very beginning why not partner with wisdom amen why not try to partner with wisdom so just try to do that in life exercise knowledge and understanding and birth wisdom let's go to james chapter 1 verse 5. i know pastor declare is on that's our code name for james and um let's read that i've got to find james in my bible uh here you go after hebrews you know jesus this is a corny dad joke but you know you know hebrews jesus loves coffee because he hebrews eh, corny joke yeah it's that it's it's father's day i could get the corny joke today so that's my only corny joke let me continue so i don't get sidetracked guys um all right so james chapter 1 verse 5 says this and if anyone longs to be wise ask god for wisdom and he will give it to you stick a pin if anyone longs for you to be wise to be wise ask god for wisdom a combination of knowledge and understanding about any matter right and we could practice it to give birth to wisdom right and he will give it to you he won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures but he will will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace so some of us sometimes we feel like we, we shouldn't ask god for, for for wisdom i can't ask god for wisdom no god god not really care no god said if you need wisdom ask for it then no matter where you are in life if you feel disappointed or not or failures or you haven't juggled this season good in your life guess what i'm not going to hold that against you i'm still going to release wisdom he says do this though just make sure you ask empowered by confident faith without doubting that you will receive just do me a favor don't be double-minded with when you ask you know so a lot of breakthrough doesn't happen in our life because we're double-minded the minute we say something to God, God, we need wisdom, but God don't want to really give no wisdom. God, we need this, but, but he don't need to do that. I want to be healed, but, but does God really want to heal me? Man, I want to be blessed in my marriage. Man, no, 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 no. It's just, we, before we even release it to God and say, God, I need it. God, I need your help. We, we shortchange ourselves by double thinking and being double-minded that God doesn't even want to ask to participate and bless us. And that's a lie. You know, when I think about wisdom and asking for wisdom, I think about this. This is a FedEx um, package. I got a FedEx package today. And two weeks ago, my friend um, sent me a gift from Texas. And with all the different things with Corona and, and the packages, it takes a little delay more than, more than usual. And I want to think of wisdom as um, asking for something and something being sent to me like a FedEx package. When you ask for wisdom, when you purchase something on Amazon, what the first thing they do? They confirm that your order has been completed come on and then they tell you when your order is shipped out and when your order is shipped out they add something called a tracking number now you still probably have to wait one or two days or three days or whatever to get the package but guess what you don't have to reorder that um that 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 um that that item again you don't have to reorder it because you know the tracking number says you own the item it's on its way and you can see it step by step until it comes to your front door and receive it and i want to just release that revelation to you some of you have asked god for things last week some of you have asked god for wisdom um two weeks ago even right now you guys are asking wisdom and i want you to to, to bind up that double-mindedness and i want you to get this image that god has sent wisdom your way right now he has sent the tracking number and the holy spirit is delivering wisdom to you right now because your wisdom though the information and the understanding has been bought by a price the special um you know most anointed blood uh, of the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth so that we can have full partnership with god so that the spirit of wisdom and revelation can live inside of you as a believer inside of me as a believer and we can release the counsel of god and expand the kingdom of god on the earth you don't have to be double-minded no more because a double-minded man is not going to receive anything so when you think about wisdom guys it's a red ascent wisdom is on its way all right let me wrap this up with my last scriptures here now so what does wisdom look like 
So we talked about wisdom. Let's re repeat the definition of wisdom. Wisdom can be defined as the exercising of knowledge and understanding, right? And let's look at what wisdom feels like, because wisdom feels like something. I don't know about you, but wisdom feels like something. And do you know that there's wisdom in the earth that is not of God? There's wisdom in the earth that's not of God. And in the book of James, again, chapter 3, verse 13, I'm going to read a little bit. And this is what it says. It says, if you consider yourself to be wise and one who understands the ways of God, advertise it with a beautiful, fruitful life. Hey, listen, advertise your wisdom with the fruitfulness of what that wisdom looks like, what the fear of the Lord looks like in your life. Advertise your life. You don't got to tell people you're wise. Advertise it with the fruit that you bear in your life. Guided by wisdom, gentleness. Wow. Wisdom is gentle. I don't know if you ever talk to someone that thinks they know everything uh, and they have ego. That's not wisdom. That's ego. And it says this, never brag or boast about what you've done and you'll prove that you're truly wise. Hey, remember that whole message I gave you guys two or three weeks ago? There's a time when you do good and people see. And there's a time when God calls you to like do good and nobody sees, but still do good. Because it's still bringing dividends for the kingdom of God on the earth and even for your life. He says, never brag or boast about what you've done and you'll prove that you're truly wise. It takes a wise person to know that what you're doing is correct and right in the eyes of God and righteous, right? And making a difference in the world, even if so, nobody sees. That takes maturity. That takes wisdom to keep on doing that. But if there is bitter jealousy, check this out. If there is bitter jealousy or competition hiding in your heart, then don't deny it and try to compensate for it by boasting and being phony. And he said, listen, that's not wisdom. Hey, when you have jealousy in your heart, when you have competition and an unhealthy competition in your heart hiding, don't deny it and try to compensate it by boasting even more. You're going to be a phony. He says, for that has nothing to do with God's heavenly wisdom, but can, be, can best describe as the wisdom of this world. So what did Paul give us right now? I'm um, sorry, James give us insight in right now. He's saying the wisdom of this world looks like bragging. The wisdom of this world looks like competition and boasting and jealousy um, and selfishness. That's what the wisdom of this world looks like. He says, for that has nothing to do with God's heavenly wisdom, but can be described as the wisdom of this world, both selfish and devilish. So there's wisdom in the world that does not originate, you know, from God. But you're going to see sides of, of, of the earthly wisdom um, that is available, not the Holy Spirit heavenly infused wisdom. When you see jealousy, when you see bitterness, when you see competition, when you see selfishness, when you see ego, when you see boasting, you know, boasting up of your own self all the time, it's, it's not of God. It takes wisdom to humble yourself, right? So whenever jealousy, wherever jealousy and selfishness are uncovered, you will also find many troubles. So people who are operating from the wisdom of the world in jealousy and competition and boasting and selfishness, you say wherever jealousy and selfishness are uncovered or discovered, you will find many troubles and every kind of mean meaningness, you know, some bad feeling and connection. Some of the fruit of world's wisdom is just what I said just now. You know, you have the fruit of the spirit, you have the fruit of wisdom. Well, guess what? This is what he's saying is that when, when you see wisdom of the world operating, it's going to be selfish, be a lot of jealousy, going to be a lot of bitterness, going to be some ego in there, lack of humility. So that means there's pride there. And um, watch out for that because you're going to uncover lots of trouble when you see the world wisdom operating. All right. And then verse 17 is the climax. James is giving us an example. So he's actually comparing the wisdom of the world. I want you to know that there's wisdom in the world. It's not good wisdom. But I want you to see how it compared to the wisdom of God. And this is what it says. But the wisdom from above. Come on, I love the buts of the Bible. But the wisdom from above is always pure. What does wisdom look like? It's pure. It's holiness. But I'm not married. I'm not going to hanky panky with you. It's being honest. It's pure. You know, if, if, if my integrity is going to be challenged, regardless if there's a law for it, if I feel the Holy Spirit questioning me that my integrity um, is being challenged and, I, and this, is, this don't seem right, it's going, I'm going to not do it. It's not pure, right? It's not filled with peace. He says, but the wisdom from above is always pure. Guess what it is? It's filled with peace. Guess what also wisdom of, uh, of, the, uh, of, of heaven looks like? It's considerate. You know, when somebody's um, being considerate, they're operating in wisdom. 
unteachable. He says, wisdom is always pure. It's filled with peace. Verse 17 of James chapter 3. It's considerate and teachable. It is filled with love and never displays prejudice or hypocrisy. Come on. Wisdom looks like not displaying prejudice or hypocrisy in any form. And verse 18 says this, And it always bear the beautiful harvest of righteousness. Wow. Guess what? Wisdom is pure, filled with peace, is considerate, teachable, it's filled with love, it never displays prejudice or hypocrisy in any form, and it always bear the harvest of righteousness. And I, I put this as a last point. Good seeds of wisdom, fruit will be planted with peaceful acts by those who cherish making peace. Wow. Good seeds of wisdom, of the seeds of good seeds of wisdom's fruit will be planted with peaceful acts by those who cherish making peace. So, guys, this is this is not everything on wisdom, right? This is just me talking to you about some of the things that I feel God is releasing to me and giving me insight on to share with you. Hey, wisdom brings freedom. Freedom is a big ingredient, a huge ingredient in wisdom. But that freedom that I use shouldn't hurt someone else. It should add value. It should add dignity. It should encourage. It should build up. Galatians 5 verse 13 mentioned that. We define wisdom. Wisdom can be defined as exercising of knowledge and understanding. And I highlighted that you could be informed and have understanding and still not operate in wisdom. But it's a partnership between those two and practicing it out that begins to actually manifest wisdom in your life. Why should we partner with the spirit of wisdom and revelation? Proverbs 8 verse 22 to 31. The wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and revelation was there at the very beginning, before the beginning. Before God created everything, wisdom, the spirit of wisdom by God's side, delighting himself and dancing over creation and being God's artist, creating what God has spoke. So let's partner with wisdom. Hey, if you, any one of you lacks wisdom, guess what? Ask for it and believe that you receive it. Believe that the Holy Spirit has sent the truck and number for your actual um, wisdom package to come to you about that meeting about that business, about that family issue, about pursuing healing, about pursuing reconciliation, about those big ideas to start our entrepreneur, a business opportunity. Guys, I don't know what it is, but when you ask wisdom, when you ask for wisdom, if you lack wisdom and you ask for wisdom, God is not going to hold back wisdom for you. He's going to send it. So your tracking number, your track, your package is on its way. Hey, wisdom looks and feels like something. When we're operating in wisdom, verse 17 of... Um, James chapter 3, it says this, But the wisdom from above is always pure. It's filled with peace. It's considerate. It's teachable. It's filled with love. It never displays prejudice or hypocrisy in any form. And it always bears the fruit, fruit of a beautiful harvest of righteousness. What does the word righteousness mean? Right standing with God. Hey, that might not be the popular stance sometimes, to be on the right side of God. You know, to make a decision, you know, about something when everybody's trending in one direction, say, hey, I don't feel like the Holy Spirit of God called me to do that. I'm at peace with doing it this way. You might even look like a phony. You might even be called names. And that's the persecution that comes um, with growing in your maturity in, uh, as a believer. But God rewards those acts of faith. And guys, guess what? Wisdom fruit look like planting um, every day we can. Um, peaceful acts by, you know, showing people that we're becoming peacemakers. And so guys, wisdom looks like peace in this season for me. And I'm trying to operate in a higher level of peace because I'm trying to um, invite God more into my process in every area of my life. Seek Him, get clarity, partner with Godly counsel. You know, obviously my wife and you know the people that are running with me in life. And I say, hey, I operate in a greater level of wisdom when I fear the Lord and I partner with God, Godly counsel. And I look at these things, hey, is this decision pure? Is it filled with peace? Is it considerate? Am I teachable to, to find out I need to do something different? Uh, is it filled with love? Am I displaying a prejudice or hypocrisy? Um, and am I, the, um, am I displaying the fruit of righteousness? And if I'm doing that, chances are, and chances you are, operating in wisdom. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for 
every person that joined us um, today for today's live, a journey. Uh, we just bless them. We speak the spirit of revelation, wisdom, and understanding to manifest more in their life. And Father, if the first step is to be surrendering their life to you and, and come into a fellowship with you by the power of your Holy Spirit and be born again, then I pray by faith they will reach out and that they would actually make that decision um, within a couple days or even a couple hours. And so I bless what you're doing in the earth and I bless what you're doing in this ministry, in the wonderful nation of the Cayman Islands. And I bless those who have an ear and listen today and a heart to receive. We thank you for the upgrade in our decisions and operating in wisdom. God bless you, church. If you haven't had an opportunity yet to sow, there's a link there where you can um, give on to the Lord. Um, if this ministry has been blessing you, if you're a partner of this ministry, I appreciate you. Um, and if you if you have done that already, thank you uh, for the rest of the day. Enjoy your family. Enjoy a, a great meal and great fellowship. And I'll see you again next week. God bless.